Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Riverdale. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I think it's very befitting in its own right. Um, obviously, like the theming of this being in the form of like a musical. I'm actually I'm so surprised like Riverdale like continued like. Because, you know, some shows can do, like, a, you know, the one that I always think of that did the most musicals for me was, like, The Magicians. Because they did, like, ever since season two, they would do, like, one every season. At least one every season. Um, but, obviously, Riverdale is kind of incorporated in, like, quite a few episodes over the course of, over the years. And so, but, obviously, this being kind of an epilogue of sorts to, like, I guess, like, almost, like, the closing chapters of, you know... But also just like the theming of it, like this being based around this um, play that Polly, Alice, and Betty saw uh, called Next to Normal, which parallels their life a lot. You know, it's just like, right, a mother wanting like a perfectly normal life. Um, marriage isn't like, you know, they don't really love each other. But then like one of the children dies. And even Reggie, when he heard that, was like, geez, Betty. It's like because everyone's surrounding her. Like, it's like, you know, how, how do we help? And, you know, the sad thing is like, you know. Alice is like deluding herself, you know. What I mean, and it's like you, you're not trying to like because everyone handles grief in their own way. Because that's the sad thing of like you got the answers you wanted. It's like rather knowing that Polly's gone, but even then, that kind of sin. Now you do know. It makes it real. Like you can say like you wanted closure, knowing, but that doesn't take away the pain of when you do know it. When you see it with your own eyes, it doesn't make it doesn't lessen the pain. You know, it finally makes it real, makes it tangible, and you have to kind of finally deal with it. Like because the not knowing will drive you crazy, but now like fully knowing like brings you down to earth, you know, and grounds you to a certain extent. And kind of, you know, that the heaviness of that anchor you're carrying, essentially. And, uh, but Alice is caught in her own delusions about, like, wanting this perfectly normal life. It's just her, uh, Charles, Betty, and, um, Polly. And I think it, the, when you actually break it down, and it's actually even, like, sadder and wild, because, I mean, obviously, like, I believe, and I could be 100%, 100% mistaken, isn't this the first time, like, Charles and Polly were ever in any scenes together this if i am wrong do let me know in the comments down below but like that fits it even more just knowing like the only time they have been a semblance of any shape of a family is in this in this like you know made up normal perfect family that alice is kind of creating and um you could tell immediately like the moment betty's like you know singing that beautiful song where it's like she's trying to get her mom out of the house but then like polly and charles are kind of drawing her back in and P betty's like i'll be there for you i'm never going to leave you alone but the thing is i knew it was going to come up that yeah you did though you left seven years ago and her mom's saying like you came back here and you drove polly away and that's why she's dead like obviously alice is just grieving and she's lashing out you know but I, this, the reason why that struck a chord is because, sadly, Betty does, like, on some level, like, she's like, Mom said that. And maybe on some level, it's true. It's, it, it's not. It's just, it's sad. It's what I think I brought it up last episode. Like, Betty wasn't on the best of terms, like, either with her mom or Polly. Because it's like, yeah, she came back in town. But it's like, yeah, she came back to R Riverdale after seven years, you know? Because once again, like... Jughead's the only one that came back on the, like, year anniversary of them leaving. And after that, he just never came back for the next six years because no one else showed up. So, the sad thing is, a lot of stuff fell to the wayside. And that's the thing of, like, right, all those si those seven years, we, we can't make up for what we lost, you know? And now, Betty, once again, her and Polly never had a real chance to really make up. Because, like I said, like, even after the farm situation all those years ago... Like, Betty and Polly weren't on the best terms, and that seven years just made that worse. They never had a chance to rekindle and make things right, you know? I mean, everything that they've lost, everything that they've been through, you know? But, you know, Kevin reminding Betty, because, you know, Betty made a promise not to, to be there for her mom, but she wasn't. But now it's like, you know, Kevin is basically telling her, you know, pick up the pieces to it, like, you know? Because all you you can't make up for what you've lost and you know the cost of it all, but you can be here now. You can be here for your mom. You can pick up the pieces, and they can find some semblance of a way forward. Like maybe we'll never be like fully okay. Like you know, 
what stepping forward is going to look like, we don't know, but, like, we can try at the very least anyway, you know? We might not be, like, the perfect, like, normal family, but we're, like, we can get close enough to normal, you know? This is what we have. We have each other, and we, you know, and that that's all we can really ask for under these circumstances. It's, you know, having to finally, like, accept, like, that perfect life can never be, you know, Polly is actually going, holding on to some semblance, some fake notion of who she is, isn't going to, um, help, so, but I think that's the interesting aspect of it all, too, is, like, everyone picking up the pieces of their lives in some shape or form, um, obviously Cheryl and her mom, you know, the state of where they are, like, her mom is like, oh, your congregation or whatever is gone, like, because they see your, um, you're, you're this for what it is like some selfish girl just trying to be narcissistic is center of attention what I think is completely hypocritical I mean because I think when you break down the deeper layers to it like Cheryl probably like has always kind of been wanting to be the center of attention not to say she is that now but I'm saying like she probably did that because she wanted to get love in other places that she can never get it at home you know it's like all she had was Jason he's only they probably made their family bearable and now it's like you know the sad thing is like time and time again she tries to very similar to I think almost like Veronica and Hiram almost I think too there's a parallel that can be drawn between Cheryl and Veronica in that regard of like right despite like the mess of situation our parents like put us through like we try and try because we want their love we want their acceptance but it's just kind of like her mom's been nothing but mean and cruel to her time and time again and then like you know for uh Cheryl it's like that like I I believe my god is you know, Gaia, and this is what I believe, but also it's like, my devil is you, so just go, so it's like, whether or not she has a congregation or not, she's on a path to being better, like, like Cheryl had brought up before, like, she's in a better place than she's been in for years, you know, she's been in a dark place for a long time, and I think for the first time, she's kind of seen the light, you know, and it's helped her move forward, so later on, when Tony's helping uh, Britta find a place, I thought she was going to try and, like, I thought the whole thing was, like, her and Fang were going to make, um, that uh, she was going to live with them, but, like, they suggested, oh, Fang uh, suggested Cheryl, because it's, like, right, like, she can give her, like, a home, and, uh, obviously, Tony was a little reluctant, but Fang's just, like, no, like, you've seen that Cheryl has changed, and I think it's just because of the circumstances of, like, yeah, Cheryl could be a little selfish in the past and stuff like that, but also, it's, like, that's a byproduct of her upbringing and everything, and I think Tony giving her that shot is, like, right, you trust me with something, you know, so, uh, something so precious, and it's, like, yeah, because I know the large capacity of love that you're capable of, Cheryl. And so uh, she takes Britta in. And we even see him later on in the episode playing chess together. And I, because Tony even pointed out, it's like, right, you know what it's like to have a parent like kind of like disown you and just, I mean, because her mom sent her away for being gay. You know, it's like being open. So it's like, once again, plays into the thing of like Penelope wants to act like Cheryl, some kind of monster, like when she's hiding who she's, you know, like, hiding the monster, she's continued to be over and over again, and once again, despite everything, Cheryl kind of still taking her back to some extent, because it's like, yeah, just like with Veronica and Hiram, like, yeah, Hiram's her dad, and she's just on some twisted level, she just wants her dad to love her, and same thing for Cheryl and Penelope, you know, so, so you've got that lane of things, you've got Tabitha and her relationship with her family, um, which her mom is played by the actress who plays Petra in um, uh, Motherland Fort Salem. I was like, hey! Um, but Tabitha, uh, you know, wants to, like, sell, have a celebration with her parents at Pops. But, like, I'm curious. I guess because it is such a family thing, like, maybe because it was always Pop Tate's thing that... Her like I guess her her dad kind of rebelled against and pushed away. He's like I couldn't get away from this fast enough, and I think that's the interesting thing that you know she came back, but her family has no interest in it. You know, it's like why does he hold such resentment for this place? And so it's like right, we've got this uh, particular uh, reservation here, and then she's like right, uh, this is my boyfriend Jughead, and it's like yeah, like he's coming along because it's like right, you'll make the dinner bearable. He's like right, but you know. I don't have to just pretend to be boyfriend. I could be. She's like, yeah, yeah, 
she's like, that sounds nice and everything, but it's like, for Joker, it's like, no, like, the, the song about, like, I could be perfect for you, like, you know, I've kind of got my issues and stuff like that, but I could, like, change and be better for you, because, like, it's like, at the end of the day, I like you, which we did have her dad show up to try and, like, shoo him away, he's like, you're like Hiram Lodge, and he's like, I don't know who that is, it's like, that's the interesting thing of, like, yeah, um, you play that role, you, f you can definitely, you can definitely, it definitely feels like she's almost, like, in the, it's very similar circumstances it's Veronica because her family's like really well off she left behind a job in Chicago because she wanted to follow her own path but it's not congruent with what her parents want even her dad gave uh, Jughead like a bottle of like alcohol I'm curious like he took it with him but I was like I was kind of scared that like he'd show up at the dinner date like drunk or something like that uh, he, he kept, but I'm, I'm curious but when we see him later on he doesn't seem like he's drinking but I mean it doesn't matter like you're you're an alcoholic like for life you're an addict for life there's no like like, there's no, like, oh, I'm, I'm over being an addict. It's like, no, that's a, that's something people have to deal with for the rest of their lives. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if that, if that kind of plays into it. But even Tabitha's, you know, later on her and Jughead singing about, you know, having, both of them having baggage. But, you know, despite everything, it's like, yeah, we're a little complicated each week. We're both coming in with our own baggage, but we can be perfect for each other, so... I think it's kind of a nice step in the right direction, considering just everything that's happened, you know? Uh, where Jughead's been, and I think, like, this could be nice for him, but I, you know, I think it, it is going to come with its own issues, like, nothing, not everything's going, not every, like, everything's going to be picture perfect, I mean, look at, um, Archie and Veronica, like, Veronica wanted to kind of move in together, it's like, oh, we can move together in Pembroke, but it's like, Archie's like, we could, like, move in together here, like, there's a lot of space, we can grow into it, she's like, sure, but sharing, uh, got roommates, like, Frank, um, I'm wondering is Eric still saying there or not, uh, um, uh, but Jughead as well, but then, like, right, Archie had to go off, you know, it's like, there's fires around town, they have to fight, and, uh, Jughead's even like, yeah, I'm gonna just go eat this in a garage, um, but obviously, like, you have Reggie, uh, wanting to go to, like, school for that, you know, legitimize him being a stockbroker, and then he's talking about what hit the life, the big time life he's gonna have, and for Veronica, she enjoyed that, you know, it's like, hearing Reggie talk about the life he wants to build for himself, it's like, Veronica had that, despite all the Chad stuff, like, that's the life she was living, and that's the life she wanted, that's the life she built for herself in the seven years, and the sad thing is, like, her, where her and Archie are in their lives, and what they want for themselves in the next five years, aren't necessarily congruent with each other, because it's like, you know, Veronica wants a place, like, of their own, especially because she has to walk in on, like, Jughead and Frank, but also, it's a situation of, like, you know, asking Archie's like, the moment, like, I'm not surprised, I was like, yeah, Archie, for Archie, it's like, move, move into the big city, it's like, no, aside from the seven years he was gone, he's lived in Riverdale his entire life, it's the only home he's ever known, so it's like, for him, it's like, he's living in his, like, the house, like, he grew up in, it's also, like, his last ties to his dad, you know, but, you know, so it's Riverdale as a whole, and for him, he wants to stay here, he wants to save this community, he wants to be here for it, it's like, you know, and I think there's nothing wrong with being that person who's like, no, I'm, I'm going to stay home, like, you know, um, especially under his circumstances. But for Veronica, it's like, it's not what she wants because she talks about her marriage with Chad. She was like, I didn't realize it, but eventually I kind of got muted. Like I kind of like little by little, I didn't even realize that I was kind of losing my own voice in the relationship, which Archie was like, I didn't know you were feeling that way. It's like, but it's like, right. We had to kind of revisit like, um what we both, how, how this relationship will be, you know, maybe we need to take a step back from moving in together, and Archie's like, we could go back to just, like, you know, uh, just dating or whatever, we could, you know, nothing has to be necessarily tied down or serious, but she's like, she's like, it's a sweet thought, Archie, but we're not in high school anymore, it's like, they're at the point in their lives where we have to decide what we want, what we really want, you know, and it's like, where they stand in all this it's that's the sad part of adulting because like sometimes like what you want isn't congruent with what your partner wants like it is about you being able to grow and move forward together but if you both want separate things like archie's fine with staying with riverdale and, for, and you know he might you know stay in because i think probably when archie was younger he probably never saw riverdale the same way his dad did his dad was fine of like yeah my family's been here for generations there were circumstances that kind of led to him staying here but, you know, and same, th like, history can be seen repeating itself, but it is a choice, and I, I don't think Fred would ever regret making the choice of s keeping his roots in Riverdale, but for, um, Veronica, that, I don't think that is congruent with what she wants, so, 
that's that's uh, a conversation in its own of just like where do they go from here, you know? Um, I mean, which is so interesting considering they did so much to fight, you know, fight to get towards each other again after these seven years. But like that's the thing too of like maybe you, the argument could be like are they still just holding on who they were years ago and like that that fire caught them again as adults and it's like right right, right. we also have to realize like we aren't those same teenagers that were in love it's like we're also adults and we want different things out of life we were kind of we're in different spaces after these and maybe if they grew together in those seven years maybe things would be different i mean they could still grow together but it's like it's a thing that they have to they have to figure out on their own of like where they're going so figure things out in that regard and with relationships you have um things and tony realizing like how they feel about each other it's like you know uh how, how much can change how much can shift in these seven years in these circumstances um at the end of the day, like, that line from Jughead is so important. Like, it's like, right, uh, Betty and Alice were actually having an actual, they had an actual burial for, like, Polly's ashes. And it's like, it's just a thing, a reminder of what to hold on to. And you see the look on Kevin's face, and I'm wondering, is it making him change his mind about what, you know, what he wants for his life? Because I, I wonder, is that going to be him reaching out to Cheryl again and be like, no, like, I do want to come back to church. Because she's like, you always have a spot here. Um... But obviously for him, it's like working as like a high school teacher. It's like that's not what he wanted for his life. So maybe we'll see him trying to go like reach out for what he really wants. Um, we'll ultimately have to wait and see what kind of happens in that regard. I'd probably say my favorite song probably in this episode just because just like it's probably the one where um, Betty and uh, Alice like the whole like the one where Charles and Polly are trying to tell her, like, no, like, look at us, like, you know, like, look at us, like, they're sitting on a couch, like, pulling her, like, basically two different ways, like, uh, uh, Betty keeps making Alice, like, turn to me, look at me, you know who I am, you know, that song, I probably my favorite song of the episode, just, I don't know, it resonated, and just, like, I don't know, like, it's just, it's something about the word, the lyrics to the song, and just the way Lily Reinhardt sung it and just like the message behind the song just like her trying to ground her mom in reality like to put uh like i don't know what it is just something about that song in particular like it it hit it like a lot of the songs hit anyway but it's just like that one in particular i don't know what it was it was just something in that moment just like i don't know i guess like the look in like lily slash you know betty's eyes like i don't know just something just kind of like it hit so deep for some reason it's weird to say i don't know once again, I find it so fascinating because I'm not the musical guy. I used to be the guy that would skip through the musical parts in certain, like, plays because I watched, like, like when my mom had, like, the Tyler Perry, like, plays, uh, you know, that were um, filmed and stuff. Like, sometimes I'd skip through those musical parts. Other times I wouldn't. But it's like, I think now I've gotten older, I appreciate musicals. Like, I've never, like, watched, like, a full-blown musical. I've never seen, I've never taken time to watch Hamilton. Like, my only experience with musicals are in TV shows which do musical episodes. So that made me grow my own appreciation. Like, not to the point I've gone out of my way to listen to full-blown musical soundtracks or whatever, but... I don't know, it just, I, I think this is such a neat little episode, because it's like, this is like the second to last episode of the season, because the next episode is the season finale, but it's like, this is its own epilogue, and there's almost like, I guess next week's episode is going to be the epilogue to the epilogue, I, I don't know, uh, I guess more like this would be the ap epilogue, and maybe the next episode would be the afterwards, if that, I, I, literally speaking, I don't know if that would, it, I, th I think the, ap the afterwards obviously do come after the epilogue, right? Because I don't think those are, the I don't think they're the same thing. Regardless, it's just like, it's such a nice, sad, bittersweet wrap up to like everything. There's still, it seems like it is just, next episode is going to be probably that episode before the time skip of just kind of like where everyone's going, what everyone's going to be deciding to do, like, what the future holds for everyone. I think that's what the next episode is. There's still a lot they could lean into that storyline-wise that's not there. Like, that's not, well, not, uh, that's still there is what I'm trying to say. That, um, there's still plenty of story and where to go in the next season, but it's just going to be interesting to see, like, what actually happens in the, in the season finale and, you know, what choices everyone makes and what directions everyone goes. Because it definitely seems like a situation where every, everyone is pulling in their own different directions, in their own 
uh, situations and you know choices that they're making, and it's like it's gonna be interesting to see what those choice where those choices lead everyone in the season finale. I mean, I'm excited to see how this season wraps up and what that means uh, in preparation for season six. Uh, but really, that's all I'm gonna talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, we'll light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.